Hey guys, Danny Bassa from the TRT and Hormone Optimization YouTube channel. Today's video, how to optimize your TRT protocol. Welcome to this channel. If you want to learn more about the most cutting edge science-based information in the world of hormone optimization, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. We get a lot of questions in our Facebook group with guys coming in with their labs and telling us, how much their dose is per week, how often they inject, and are they doing IM, and are they doing sub-Q, and all this other jazz. And they're never quite sure what, or if there is anything, they need to change in regards to the protocol. So I wanna go over some basic strategies that I've picked up over a number of years, um, also dealing with a number of different doctors who all have different strategies. And I'm gonna explain what I have found to be the most reliable strategy for this. There's two key components of a TRT protocol. And I'm gonna talk about TRT protocols here. I'm gonna basically rule out that there's any other thing that's wrong with you. I'm not gonna, we're not gonna discuss, you know, if you got issues with insulin sensitivity or issues with your thyroid or vitamin deficiencies or you're overweight or some other issue. We're gonna assume that the rest of you is fine, that your issue was strictly testosterone related and a proper protocol, protocol would make you feel better. Um, so there's two components to a proper TRT protocol. One of them is how much you're taking a week. And the other one is how often you're injecting a week. So they are both equally important to a degree. If you are taking a, the correct amount of testosterone per week, but are maybe, maybe only injecting once a week and find you have issues, it might not necessarily be the dose. It might be that you need to inject more often during the week. In contrast, if you were injecting, you know, every single day, as an example, just to use the other end of the spe spectrum, but perhaps weren't taking enough, well, that's also going to cause you an issue. So both of these are equally important parts of the, of the equation here. Um, the, uh, one question we get asked very, very often is guys come in or they'll, comment on the channel or the comment on, on the Facebook and say, hey, what's your dose? What's your, how much, you know, how much are you taking? You know, you look like you're doing pretty good. How much are you taking? Um, I get asked that question <laughs> probably a hundred times a week. And I hate to tell you guys, I hate to break it to you, but the answer that I would give you is completely and utterly irrelevant to your specific case because my protocol is not necessarily gonna be the best protocol for you. And you could probably talk to 10 other people and their protocols might not be the best one for you. The key here is to determine what is the best protocol for you and not what is the best protocol for somebody else because it's kind of pointless and irrelevant for me to know what is the best protocol for somebody else. Okay, I need to know what's the best protocol for me. So we're gonna look at two different things. Number one, frequency. How often you're injecting, how often you're applying. If you are using, and in this video, we're just gonna discuss the two, um, most uh, most likely scenarios of you're either doing injections or you're doing um, the cream. We're not gonna discuss pellets because I mean, there is a place for them maybe, you know, I got guys sometimes contacting me saying I'm taking off for the Marines on a special mission for the next three months and I don't want my levels to drop. Hey, you know, maybe pop some pellets in and you know, at least you'll have some levels for a given amount of time. But that is far, far from the optimal uh, method of administration. So there's a very, very small case that you can use pellets. The vast majority are going to be doing better with with injections and with the cream. Um, just to give you a very fast comparison, I do have some guys report that they felt much better with the cream than injections. And then I also have a lot of guys that have, are doing a lot better with injections. Um, some guys do better with that cream. And if they do, great. They've tried both, great. So you can, that's something you need to try for yourself. Others have issues with absorption. Others have issues with varying levels. You know, when you're taking an injection, you're ensuring all of it is getting in. Uh, so that kind of, kind of becomes a little bit more reliable than cream. You're not worrying about how much you're absorbing. But I do know guys doing quite well with the cream. So that's one of those things that you want to kind of experiment to determine which of those two you like the best. Obviously, with injections, you know, you can inject twice a week or three times a week or whatever else. With the cream, you're typically applying this every day. And, and, and ideally you're applying it twice a day. So you have to think about, you know, do I really want to apply this stuff to my, uh, my scrotum twice a day or just give myself a, you know, a couple injections a week and I'm done. 
So that's, that's well, that'll be a different topic, but that's why I'm talking specifically about injections and cream. Um, so frequency, if you're on the cream, you are already going to be applying daily. And that in itself is already much better than guys that are taking testosterone once a week. So that will keep levels much more consistent. Um, the guys I know that are real type A personalities and really want to do this properly, they are taking cream twice a day. I've had so many guys contact me saying that their doctor said, said it's crazy to apply cream twice a day. If you look at the half-life of the cream, you would see why it makes sense to apply it twice a day, morning and night, to keep levels as consistent as possible. Nobody's trying to mimic their, uh, their diurnal pulse and whatever. We're not trying to mimic nature at all. We're just trying to restore levels to something that makes sense and resolve symptoms, and that's it. So if you're applying the cream, you're already going to be keeping levels pretty consistent. If you're doing it once a day, you can maybe uh, divide your dose into twice daily, morning and night. That helps a lot. In regards to injections, most guys get started with once weekly injections. There are a lot of guys that do well with once weekly injections. How do you know that you're a guy that does well at once weekly injections? Well, if you give yourself injection, you know, on a Saturday and come Friday, you feel just the same. You feel the same. You don't really feel like you've changed throughout the week or, you know, at the beginning of the week I felt one way and now I kind of feel, uh, you know, or at the beginning of the week I had this crazy libido and now not so much. And then I, you know, when I get my injection on the Saturday, like by Sunday, like my libido is coming back. If you're not getting those issues at all, guess what? You're probably suited to take once weekly injections. If it works, don't change it. Guys that are doing once weekly injections typically have an SHBG level fairly high up might be in the 50s or 60s or 70s or whatever else, higher up. They're not going to have low SHBG. When I say SHBG, sex hormone, sex hormone binding globulin, you can look that up. Um, we're not going to go into a whole talk about that. This is really about these two, two things. So if you are feeling any different by the end of the week, you can say, let me take my dose. Let's say your dose was 150 milligrams a week. Let me split it in two. Let me take a shot on Monday and I'll take a shot on Thursday or whatever other days. I don't really care what days. Some people ask me, which days should I do? And it's just like, just twice a week, <laughs> split it up twice a week. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Some guys say, well, I'll inject, you know, Monday morning and then it would be 3.5 days later. So Tuesday, Wednesday, so that would be Thursday evening. You don't have to do it like that. As long as you're getting your 200, your, your, your dose per week, you're fine. Okay. Morning, night, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Try it to twice a week. If you suddenly don't have those issues and you say, hey, I feel pretty much the same all day long, you know twice a week is what works for you. You can go to more frequent if you really, really want to, but twice a week obviously it seems to work. You're not getting any symptoms. You need to use this strategy and keep going as often as possible till you find a frequency that works for you. Maybe you're doing three times a week ejections and still feeling kind of up and down. You know, I have libido one day and the next day I don't. The next day I do and I'm up and I'm down and some days I sleep well and other days I don't and I'm, I'm so inconsistent on three days. Guess what? Maybe you'll need more frequent. Maybe you'll need every other day or maybe you can even do small daily shots. Small daily shots will be the extreme where you're gonna keep your levels as consistent as possible. Now, if you're a type A personality like me and are obsessed with doing everything in the best way possible, you know, you can do daily shots. Um, you also don't want to choose something that you're going to commit yourself to and not be able to follow through. So if you're not a type A personality, don't say I'm going to do daily shots and then you're missing two or three or four shots a week. Do something that you know you can stick with. Okay. So that's rule number one is frequency. By the way, most of the things that people call E2 issues are basically just those, flu those fluctuations during the week. You know, oh, I feel crap by the end of the week. I'm only injecting once a week and I have these issues. I have these E2 issues. No, guess what? As soon as you start making them a little bit more consistent throughout the week, those E2 issues disappear. E2 issues now has become the laughing stock of my Facebook group because any little issue that any of you guys have on TRT, you're calling them E2 issues, which is absolutely astonishingly, let's not even get into that subject. I think I've done enough videos on that. So frequency. Now, Let's get into, and by the way, uh, when I was mentioning SHBG before, if you've got low SHBG, say it's 20 or under, 
I wouldn't even I wouldn't even suggest starting with once weekly or even twice weekly. I, I would say probably start at three times a week if you've got low SHBG. The low SHBG, SHBG means that you're going to metabolize and burn through that testosterone a lot faster than a guy with high SHBG. So I won't go into, too, again, too much detail on that because that's a totally other topic. Um, but if you've got an SHBG of, let's say, under 20, you know by default you're going to need more frequent injections to feel better than a guy that's got higher SHBG. Guy that has higher, you can probably do once a week, twice a week, and he's fine. Okay. Um, another topic, very very quick about this frequency, is you hear about so many doctors prescribing once a week, but then all the guys in the forums and all the guys in the Facebook groups, whatever, none of them are doing once a week. Why? Because the vast majority of men who get on once a week and they, they probably wind up feeling fine. They don't report any symptoms. They're just, they're fine. They don't come into these Facebook groups asking for asking about questions. They don't watch these, these YouTube videos because they feel fine. So it's not a concern for them. The guys that are having the issues are the guys that typically need to do more frequent injections and haven't. They're blaming their issues on estrogen. They're blaming the issues on how much AI I should take and all this other nonsense and HGG and all this crap. And guys, it's so simple. Figure out how often do I need to inject throughout the week that I feel fine throughout the week, that every single day I feel pretty much the same, whatever that frequency is. Don't base it on anybody else. Base it on what works for you. Dose. What is a good starting dose? Well, I've had doctors I used to speak to who started every pretty much every guy on 200 milligrams a week. There's other doctors I, I deal with right now who start guys on 200 milligrams a week. I've seen doctors starting people on 50 milligrams a week. Um, I'd love to slap them because it's causing them their patients more harm than good, giving them 50 milligrams a week, but whatever. Um, then you got the other guys that are like, you know, we're going to start at 100 and then over time we're going to raise the dose to 120 and then check labs in eight weeks and maybe raise it to 140 and check labs in eight weeks. And meanwhile, you, it's taking you months or years to get to a point that you're going to feel better. Um, the opposite end of the spectrum, you got guys that start at 200 milligrams a week, crazy anxiety, can't sleep, breaking out in acne, not feeling well at all. And then, you know, having their dose brought down, brought down, brought down. So. How do you determine what's the best dose? Well, the best dose is kind of a gamble. There are some guys, like me as an example, I need a pretty hefty dose of testosterone just to get the same levels that some of my buddies get with less than half of what I'm taking. Okay, so I'm, I'm one of those. I'll, be, I'll call myself one extreme. You've got the other extreme where there's guys that take a tiny, tiny little bit of testosterone and they get crazy anxiety. Okay, we've we've found variants in DNA that if they have a certain variant of their SNP, it can indicate that they might be hypersensitive to testosterone. And these guys might only actually be able to take like five milligrams a day. I can probably count on one hand how many of them I've seen, but I have seen it. Okay, and as soon as they try to bring their 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 their, their dose up, even if they're doing daily and they decide I'm going to take ten milligrams a day, even that's too much. Crazy anxiety, panic, claustrophobia, the whole the whole shebang. You got to keep in mind that these guys are very rare. Okay. Are you going to be one of those guys if you're just starting TRT? Probably not, but you got to keep in mind it's possible because there are guys like that. So I could be the type that I really require just a tiny little bit, or I could be the type that really requires a lot. So what is my best starting dose? Based on all of the doctors I've spoken to and all of them having varying strategies and being on so many forums and Facebook and my Facebook group and getting people sending me labs left and right. Needless to say, I've seen a ton of different strategies. I've seen a ton of different outcomes. And I can say that my new revised starting dose would be 150 milligrams a week to start. Why? Because the vast number of people are going to need more testosterone today than they had before due to environmental factors and toxins in our body and the phytoestrogens and all this type of stuff. We've done videos on that subject. Um, guys doing TRT you know, 30 years ago probably would not have required that amount of dose, but we're seeing that as time passes, the doses are getting higher and higher to, to, to resolve symptoms. At 150, if it so happens that you're the person that's getting anxiety, well, guess what? At least you weren't taking 200 right? 
you're at 150. So now it's very easy to drop the dose down quicker versus having started from 200. If you're one of those guys that need a lot more, well, good thing you didn't start at 100. You're already at 150, so you're 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 further up the chain. I'm finding that to be the best in-between balance um, to, you know, like I said, you're, you're, you're making a gamble. You know, you could be here, you could be here. I'm finding 150 milligrams a week is probably the best starting dose. You can start with that. So guys starting with on TRT, if you're starting with 150 milligrams, say to yourself, first of all, if I'm just starting out, it will take probably six or eight weeks till I start feeling what the outcome is of my protocol. Okay, I get messages daily. I started TRT last week. I'm not feeling it yet. What should I do? Okay, it doesn't work this way. It will take eight weeks. So you give yourself your shot or you apply your cream and you just put a note in the calendar and you say, come eight weeks from now. Oh, here's my date. It's been eight weeks. How do I feel? Do I feel good? Do I, you know, what's, what's missing? Um, if you start taking uh, testosterone and start getting crazy anxiety. There's two factors here. You could be one of those types I was talking about that are very, very rare that just their bodies and their brains just cannot handle testosterone in any larger amount that they need these microdoses. You might be one of those guys. What you also might be is somebody who is maybe has a little anxiety, maybe has a little paranoia, maybe is fearful of this whole thing, unsure, um, you know, concerns even in your in your self in your subconscious, and and I am totally guilty of that when I started TRT. Is I gave myself my first injection, and then I was like, okay, so when is it going to hit? Is it going to hit? Like, am I going to feel a rush? Is it going to be a surge? What's going to happen? Is something going to change? Am I like? And I was waiting for something to happen, and guess what? Nothing happens. You could be that type that you're just worrying about it, and that in itself is giving you anxiety. So to all you guys starting TRT, imagine you tell yourself, I'm going to give myself my first shot. And it's basically like, I'm going to have a cup of fresh air. Guess what? It didn't do a damn thing, right? Correct. It's not going to do a damn thing on the first day. It's going to take a while until you start feeling anything. And the feeling anything is going to be this little gradual change all the time. It's not anything that's gonna happen, hit you like a ton of bricks, like drinking an espresso. It's gonna be, you know, I say, hey, lately I've been feeling a little bit better. I've been sleeping a little bit better. And it's, it's just gonna be this very gradual improvement. So don't be afraid of something just hitting you all at once, okay? Now, if it does hit you all at once, again, you're either, it's either in your head or you're one of those types that requires a low dose. If you're one of the types that requires a low dose, you can say, hey, let me play it safe and I'm going to give myself a tiny dose a day. I'll give myself 10 milligrams per day and I'll give myself small little daily shots and let me see if that has any effect on my anxiety and you can go from there. Okay. Those are the cases that are most complex. I find are the guys that have the anxiety is that you can, it really can take some time to dial in, but I would say first step is, Stop thinking, oh, I want to have as much testosterone as possible. Go to the other extremes and let me start absolutely at the bottom and give myself a tiny little bit every day and see if my anxiety goes away. If it does, great. Let me increase it by a tiny little bit each day and do that gradually over time. So let's assume that you're the guy taking 150 milligrams a week. There's a number of things that can happen. You go to your labs after eight weeks. You figured out how often you should be injecting to be feeling good. Okay, by that point, and let's say you've decided, hey, if I do three, three times a week injections, I'm feeling pretty consistent and I'm good. Let me just check my blood values. Now, if you get to your blood values, the real only thing that is of, of any importance, I find, is your free testosterone levels. Don't worry about your total don't worry about your estrogen. Don't even bother doing the damn estrogen test. Yes, I said that. Don't worry. Don't even bother doing a damn estrogen test. If you were to send me your labs and had only free testosterone, I could probably help you out just based on that. All right. Where is your free testosterone? I'm going to use the American units. If you are significantly below 30 NGDL and you're still having some issues, 
you'll know that you can probably raise your dose some more, okay? If you are very close to 30 milligrams at 30 uh, NGDL and are still having symptoms, you can do one of two things. You can say, let me wait a little bit longer, give it another eight weeks to see if I feel better, or let me, um, or let me increase the dose some more and bring my levels up a little bit higher and then assess after eight weeks. If you are at 150 milligrams a week and have free T levels of say, you know, they've hit over 60 NGDL and you're still having issues, guess what? You're probably taking too much or testosterone wasn't your problem. So you can probably bring it down. The vast number of guys that I talk to that are doing really well, and I've done polls in my Facebook group asking, what are your levels, how much you're taking, whatever, and we base on a free tea. They're all between 30 to 60. Guys that are doing more than 60, that's usually, I mean, I do know a handful of guys that actually need higher than 60 to, to have symptom resolution, but I'd say the vast majority are somewhere between 30 and 50, okay? Are you gonna fall in that range? I don't know. You gotta figure out what's the best the best amount for you but you can use that kind of as a guideline to say i know that a lot of guys fit around there i don't know if i'm going to fall in here but if i'm at my free tea is at 12 i know that i'm really far from this range of 30 to 50 so i know i can probably increase my dose and still not have any issues if i do do my labs and my free tea is at 100 and i'm not feeling well well you know I know I can probably lower my dose a little bit to maybe get a little closer to the range. So you're not targeting that range, so to speak. You're not telling yourself, I need to be in that range. You're using it as a very light general guideline. So again, you do your labs, you're at 40. You're not feeling well. I said, well, you know, maybe I can try raising it a little bit more, but I'm already pretty much in that range. But if you're at a free T of 10, you know damn well that you need to raise your dose. Chances are, if you're still having issues, okay? Um, these are the two, the, 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 the two most important things for dialing in your dose. Again, frequency, finding a frequency where you feel the same throughout the week and, let your, and, your, and, your, and you're consistent and you're not having any ups and downs and then playing with dose. Whenever you're playing with dose, give it a good eight weeks you would not believe how many guys have messaged me after six weeks and said they were still feeling off. And I said, give it another two weeks. And two weeks later, the reply says, the last two weeks, everything changed. Everything is improved, okay? That eight week mark seems to be like that golden rule of that the amount of time to wait to really assess a protocol. While you are doing all of this, don't change anything else. Don't start taking any extra vitamins or minerals or supplements or herbs or anything. If you were taking the vitamins and minerals and supplements before, great. Keep doing that. Don't stop it during this test. Keep everything the same and only change one variable, how much you're taking and your frequency of injection or, or application. Don't change anything else because if you've waited the eight weeks and still feel off, then you say, well, you know, I... I did stop taking my vitamin D at week two, and it's true, I started taking a lot more vitamin. Then you, then you have no idea, is it the protocol that's not making me feel good, or is it some other thing I've changed? You won't know. So you have to use logic here. You have to say to yourself, I'm going to change a variable, one variable, and I'm gonna give it eight weeks, and I'm gonna see what effect that one variable had after eight weeks. Don't change anything else. If you're gonna change two variables, well, guess what? Was it the first variable that helped you or, or made, you, made it worse or the second? What you can do is you wanna change two variables, wait the eight weeks and say, okay, well, I've been taking 150 milligrams a week and I was injecting twice a week. And it's been eight weeks and I know now that I'm still feeling up and down. And I'm looking at my labs and my free tea is only at about 20 and I'm still having some issues. Okay, so. I'm gonna change two variables. I'm gonna increase maybe from 150, I'll go up to let's say 175 or 180. And I'm gonna start doing every other day injections. That's what I'm gonna change. And then do that, but do that for entire eight weeks and don't change anything. Keep that 175 and keep that every other day injections for a period of eight weeks. And then take a measurement 
and decide how do I feel now after eight weeks with that protocol and go from there. If you do things in a logical, uh, you know, a logical manner like this, which is kind of like you're doing a proper science experiment, you will get yourself dialed in much faster. The guys that are not getting themselves dialed in are constantly changing shit every single day or every week or every two weeks, and they're never gonna f figure it out. It just won't. I'm on 150, oh, but I feel this. Two weeks later, oh, let me drop down to 120. Oh no, my libido's off. Two weeks later, let me go to 200. Oh no, but I can't sleep now, I can't. Let me go to 175. Oh, maybe I should do daily. And, and they just keep changing stuff. You could do that for the rest of your life, you'll never get dialed in because you're constantly changing stuff. Pick something, commit yourself to that something, do it for eight weeks, okay? This is the best advice I can give you. Stay off the damn AI. If you are trying to block your estrogen, I don't care if your doctor told you to block your estrogen or the guys in the forums told you to block your estrogen or your friend is blocked, they wanna block their estrogen, you'd say, hey, knock yourself out, block all the estrogen you want. If you do that, I'm gonna get pissed at you because it's the dumbest thing you can be doing. I hate to be as blunt as I am, but it's the dumbest thing you can be doing. Do not block your estrogen. If you're, especially if you're having a hard time getting dialed in and you're on an AI, rule number one, let me stop taking my, my AI. I won't even change my dose. I won't even change my frequency. I'm just gonna stop taking my AI and give it eight weeks for my body to balance out and see. I might feel a million times better just doing that and you'll be healthy, okay? This is the most common theme in our Facebook group Guys getting trying to get dialed in and they tried a million different things and we teach them about not blocking estrogen. And it's not just blah, 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 blah words you should because I told you to. I provide the evidence. I provide a ton of studies. Jordan Grant has made a huge Google Drive with a ton of studies. And we say, go read through all this and then tell me if you still want to block estrogen. They stopped doing it based on that. And they said, well, I haven't found any evidence why I should block it, so I'm gonna try this out. And you wouldn't believe the amount of guys that come back saying, holy shit, I feel so much better just by not taking the AI, okay? So before you're gonna get into frequency and dose, stop the damn AI. Stop that first. Give it six to eight weeks because your body's gonna take some time to balance. You might feel worse before you feel better. You will eventually balance out. And then if you still have issues, decide, am I gonna change my frequency or am I gonna change my dose? Take eight weeks. Every single one of these eight weeks thing is you're testing something that you've committed to for eight weeks and you have not changed any other variable. And that's it. All of you are welcome to look me up on Facebook, Danny Bossa, I'm easily found, ugly mug, you can't miss it. You can join our Facebook group, same as the YouTube channel, TRT and Hormone Optimization. Everybody's free to join, men, women, you're kids, your grandmother, I don't really care. You guys got a question, you can post in the group. Um, and there's doctors there that'll, that'll chime in and, and help you out. Um, again, I am not a doctor. Do not take this advice as medical advice. I'm just saying this is the best strategy that I've found from the amount of time I've spent in this, in this community. And it seems to work really, really, really well. All of the guys that are messaging me and sending me emails from forums and whatnot, I'm giving them the exact same advice, okay? There are gonna be guys that are gonna be complicated and they're gonna need a little bit more work and a little bit more, more fine tuning, but for the vast majority of them, I'd say probably 98% of them, this strategy will work and it will work quick and it will get you dialed in and feeling better quick, all right? If you like this video, click the damn like button because I'm gonna keep helping you guys out as often as I can. And I got no product to sell you, right? <laughs> no product to sell you here, all right? I'm doing this really for the benefit of you guys just to help out, to take whatever knowledge I've learned and just share it with you guys. And if it helps out even one of you, I'm happy, all right? Click like, click, click subscribe, click the notification bell. And if we're seeing likes and notifications coming in, we're gonna keep making these videos, all right? Hope this helped you out and uh, enjoy the rest of your day.